In reality TV, what you're waiting for, what you're sometimes even rooting for, the scenes that make it onto the highlight reels and go viral online, they're not necessarily the plot points that fit the conceit of the show. It's really the incidental disasters. On, on The Bachelor or The Bachelorette, one of those dating shows, you're interested in who the hunky single person is going to choose at the end of the show, but on the way, what you're really watching for is things going horribly awry. The date when somebody gets super drunk at dinner and ends the night um, not very smooth, yeah, smoothly, bah, yeah. Uh, on Jersey Shore, for example, it's the, it's the big muscly guy, Ronnie, getting mad and punching a guy out and going to jail. On one of those Real Housewives shows, it's the long-standing argument blowing up and somebody flipping the table over and cursing a blue streak. It's stuff going wrong. You're waiting, if not rooting, for the incidental disasters. That's how that kind of drama, that kind of entertainment works. There's nothing wrong with it, it's just the way it works. The network known for airing shows like Whacked Out Videos and Ninja Warrior and Cheaters, which is about people cheating on their wives and husbands, uh, the network G4 has just announced their latest reality show. It's called Bomb Patrol Afghanistan. I'm not kidding. The U.S. Navy has given them permission to shoot 10 episodes with American troops on an explosives ordnance disposal team at war in Afghanistan, and then they are going to show it on American TV starting sometime this spring. The company's breathless press release about it says, while one day's patrol could result in the successful disarmament of a 50-pound roadside bomb via remote-controlled robot, another could put an EOD tech wearing a 70-pound protective bomb suit in direct contact with a potentially deadly IED. Pop some popcorn. A G4 spokeswoman told Military.com today that she didn't know how the company would handle the issue of casualties among the soldiers on the show. The company has thus far provided no details about their plans for dealing with that, though certainly the prospect of those American casualties is what they think is going to make people tune in. It is already what they are marketing about the show. Remember, the U.S. Navy has given this the green light and is facilitating the camera crew's access. Maybe the thinking is that if you can't keep the American people supporting the nine-year war in Afghanistan, at least if you let in the right camera crews, then killing American soldiers over there can make for some good home front entertainment. Joining us now for the interview is Frank Rich, award-winning columnist for the New York Times. Frank, thanks very much for coming in. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Um, uh, does packaging the war's entertainment get Americans to like the war more, do you think? <laughs> I don't think so. I, you know, no one even, this war has been going on so long, no one remembers, including possibly the Pentagon, that when the Afghanistan war began, they did exactly the same thing. They made a deal with ABC, with a very successful producer, Jerry Bruckheimer, who did mm -hmm. Top Gun and Black Hawk Down, to do a show, a reality show from Afghanistan, the Afghanistan war. Oh uh, it was called Tales from the Front. And it was a much more popular war then because it was in the aftermath of 9-11 and the show still bombed. Wow. Well, why, why, I mean, they've done it before, which I didn't know before you said that, but why would they okay it then? Why would they okay it now? What's the... Well, first of all, it's probably two... You know, this war's going on so long, it's the... No one... Who remember? You know, it was the Rumsfeld regime back then, yeah. so, so no one remembers. Yeah. But also, I think that... Um, uh, the government really doesn't understand show business, no part of it, and certainly not the Pentagon. So it's sort of desperate, it's almost poignant, and I feel sorry for these men and women who are going to be portrayed in a kind of, it has a snuff movie quality that, that's depressing. Yeah. Um, in your most recent column, you wrote, um, poor General Petraeus. Over the last week, he's been ubiquitous in the major newspapers and on television as he pursues a publicity tour to pitch the war he's inherited. But have you heard any buzz about what he had to say? Any debate? Any anything? No one was listening and no one cared. Everyone was too busy yelling about the mosque. Is, is the real 9-11 story, the Afghanistan war, um, being pushed out by the mosque story as a sort of more politically convenient 9-11 proxy? Well, what's bizarre about it, yes, and what's bizarre about it is the fact that the people who are demonstrating against the so-called mosque are probably supporters of the war in Afghanistan, and yet they're completely undermining it, not only because they're giving al-Qaeda the storyline it wants for propaganda of Americans hating uh, Islam, but also because we're fighting as allies with a Muslim nation. Afghanistan, we're fighting for a nation that 
has mosques, has a lot of mosques. And the whole point of Petraeus' uh, counterinsurgency strategy, as you know, is to win the hearts and minds of Afghanis, Muslims, and we're trashing them and calling them Nazis uh, in New York. So it's really defeating for Petraeus to drown him out, but it also undermines his whole strategy and the whole argument uh, for pursuing this war further. Well, for, for all the bad decisions made post 9-11, we really didn't see a national, like, open, partisan, two minutes hate towards Muslims the way we are seeing now about this mosque debate. Why is it happening now? I think it's a. I think it's happening now because of Obama. I mean, go back to right after 9/11, Bush, for whatever reason, did the right thing very quickly. He went to an Islamic center in Washington. He said Islam is a religion of peace. We're not out to get Islam. Why is it starting up now? Well, I think it, it fits into, if I may say so, the Fox right-wing strategy of trying to portray. Obama as a, as a, as a, you know, a closet terrorist, basically, and a, and a practitioner of Islam. So it has a synergy in a campaign year, and this whole thing has just been ginned up and is, it's depressing, it's undermining the war, it's, it's doing nothing but spreading bad feeling. On, in, in terms of the other war, why do you think the ending of the Iraq war is passing so quietly? I think the country has tuned out of the whole region. I think another indicator, besides the fact that no one seems to be paying attention to mission being semi-accomplished again mm -hmm. in Iraq, is the incredible humanitarian disaster in Pakistan. That is an enormous thing. It's gotten plenty of press coverage, but Americans are really sort of unaware of it. The contributions don't compare to those in Haiti. Mm -hmm. uh, it's because people just, they've had their depressed about the economy. They don't really know what our strategy is in Afghanistan. Iraq is sort of out of sight, out of mind. And both wars are incredibly unpopular. Even as we leave Iraq with some at least temporary measure of stability or sort of stability until today, 69% in the last poll oppose that war. 62% oppose the Afghan war. So. Frank Rich, award-winning columnist for The New York Times. Um, it is always a really big pleasure to have you here. So thanks for coming in. Thanks for having nice me. Nice to see you.